Hello everyone, I'm Henry Lee. Now I'm at my home studio, uh, trying to set up a live demo uh, to experiment my landscape painting on mulberry paper, which is a very thin paper. As you have uh, seen in my still pictures earlier, um, it could be painted and appreciated on both sides. So it's uh, sometimes difficult to to decide which side is the front. If it's uh, this side, which I painted on, or the reverse side. Um, as you can see, there are some uh, rough fibers, stringy fibers here. On the wrong side, you can feel it more. And uh, the front side is uh, a little more smooth. Uh, let me get a new piece of paper you can see. You can tell the front and the back by touching it. Uh, if you look at for a rough, uh, coarse fiber, you can feel it on the back side more than the front side. This is how I tell which side is front. Um, so I normally paint on the smooth side And uh, I have got questions from a friend about um, the paint I used to uh, paint recently. I use Hobian watercolor. This is my palette. I adopt uh, a Taiwanese uh, watercolorist, uh, Jian, uh, teacher Jian, Jian Zhongwei's um, color palette, because he used uh, this kind of uh, uh, opaque or semi-opaque colors, uh, which I found very uh, useful. And um, uh, it's basically good for landscape. I also um, use for anything like uh, people and uh, flower and birds. So let me uh, paint. Okay, you have seen uh, this light underneath. This is used for tracing. I'm not going to use this for landscape, abstract landscape, of course. But it's nice to uh, sometimes turn the lights on so you can see uh, the effects better. Anyway, I'm going to do whatever I feel like now. I use regular Chinese brush, also uh, some Western brush, like uh, the um, Sebo brush. I use Chinese watercolor brushes, just not like uh, the basic brushes, or the uh, combination brush, so I can use any brush, it's, it's not really matter to me. Let's just use a Chinese brush to start with. This is the super wash brush. Let me see, I think the image is horizontal, so better stand on this side. You can dampen the brush, I mean the paper first, if you want to uh, have less strokes, like a, if you want to do a preliminary um, tone to the paper to make it, uh, uh, let's do that. So we can, just like a watercolor, you will dampen a little bit, maybe not too much. I'm doing a dramatic uh, sky, like a storm clouds. Oh, here we go. 
try to find the camera. Forgive me for the mess here. So I'm going to um, draw a background, I think. I got some warm color to start with. Got a little yellow, some uh, Laponian yellow, Laponian yellow, and some uh, pink, pinkish. I don't know what's the color. I will post the image uh, of my actual tubes. The name I I'm not familiar yet. Um, anyway, I'm going to wash. The paper was very pale, uh, very pale color, kind of warm, yellowish. You can get some orange color to make it a little more dramatic. And this is maybe a little too strong, but uh, we can we can apply uh, just like watercolor. You apply one color and you can alter it with another color, just like a glazing. Uh, so this uh, rice paper or mulberry paper is perfect for that. Um, and you know you you can take advantage of the fiber here. If you see something interesting, you want to place a certain corner or or you know take advantage of that. You can still decide the heaven and earth at this point. I you know I kind of you can. Let it dry before you apply um, second color, or you can do wet into wet. To save time, I just uh, keep doing it. So let's do a little cool color. We just use some gray. It's an opaque base, like so. I use a little. Gray as base, and then I'll use some uh, um, like hair crimson or, or cerulean blue to make it uh, blue gray <laughs> on this side of the sky. You can leave some white, flying white in Chinese. So we need to decide. Uh, what's the, the the lightest and the, the darkest uh, in the painting, right? Just like a Chinese painting. Black and white is the more, uh, most uh, important in the composition. And now I, I paint some dark clouds with a kind of blue. I mix a little cerulean and uh, French ultramarine and just Went down with uh, what I what left here. <clears throat> you can uh, wait it dry a little bit if you want. I'll just keep doing. Um, do an ocean kind of. So let's get some blue. Some blue. You can use the opposite uh, complementary color to make it glare, grayer. Like some raw sienna. There's some cut off. Uh, just move my. Okay, here we go. Can you see it now? Okay, we can uh, let it dry a little bit. We can use a hair dryer, but I would rather uh, wait because the uh, just like the pens to um, expand, you know, do the work. So um, I'll just put it aside, and uh, let's go back to the previous painting that I did 
uh, last night. Uh, let me put this up. So, so this is what I did yesterday. Uh, this is the front side. I saw painted wet into wet, just like I did. I, I didn't wet uh, dry, so it's all smeared. And uh, uh, after it dries, I did some highlights or accent on the kind of wrinkled surface, so you can see some color is uh, uh, more uh, textured. Because when I did the, the dark, I just skim on the on the surface, so it's. Uh, Kind of nice, you see. This, pen, this wrinkled technique is also uh, part of that. And this is the back. As you can see, the stringing fiber is not colored, so it makes it more interesting. Look like more um, turbulent, like a tornado uh, storm with. Uh, these fibers in the cloud, this this uh, things in the cloud. Um, this side looks more subtle, so I'm still debating which side to uh, use, because when we mount it, we cannot make a turn back. I have to decide. Okay, now I have uh, this painting back. Uh, I think it would be uh, nice to have a little damp, so I can um, mingle two different uh, value or tones. Uh, let's just add some uh, drama to it. I will use uh, dark, I think. So we can use the uh, ultramarine and the uh, erythrine crimson to make it uh, kind of purple. And you can add, uh, um, you can make some part more blue, some uh, more um, red. And you can use uh, the raw amber to make it uh, darker. Grayish, more grayish, I think. Let's, let's see what we can do. So I want to have uh, some dark, shady part in the clouds here. Under the clouds. I don't have to make it even. There's some blue, some purple. There's no perfect purple. Just a different... Uh, um, Proportion of the red, uh, blue, and the yellow. Well, they look like uh, just the sunset color, so you don't have to really make it uh, rainy. Right? If you put some strokes like that, you will start to to see the uh, shower kind of clouds. And uh, it's it's uh, risky, but I want to try some some black, just to see if it <laughs> blends well. You know, the the black is part of uh, the palette, but uh, not supposed to mix with other colors. But in Chinese painting, we we cannot live without it. So I kind of add some black. See the color start to, to bleed, and uh, if you see an effect you really like to keep uh, as is, you can use the hair dryer. The 
Let's use the hair dryer. I realized my my camera is off the off the picture. Still trying to figure out the orientation. It's weird. Okay, I think uh, let's add a little cards on the corner. Actually, they should be a little larger. This is closer to the camera. I'll just use some black. Pull it to the front, I think. Well, let's turn it to the back, see what it looks like. So you can paint on both sides, if you will. Um, this, you know, could be the front if you want. This is the bottom, right? You can you can paint with the the pink color on the back and the transparent color on the front, if you will. That's the traditional Chinese way of doing the color. See, I can use some opaque color on this side. And it will appear more subtle because it won't cover the effect I got already on the front. Okay, this is uh, basically um, what uh, the procedure. You can uh, add many layers of uh, color washing until you uh, reach the desired effect. And uh, next, I'm going to mount uh, a painting I did yesterday. Okay, I can just use this. Uh, this painting actually, even you know, you can mount it before it dries and continue to work. Okay, this is the silicone, silicone mounting paper, and. Uh, 
we need to make uh, the painting evenly damp. If it's partially damp, it will create uh, unevenness or wrinkles. So we just spray a little moisture to the dry part. So now they're they're all damp. So I think this is the back. So I'm going to put this painting. Uh, this silicone side against this the back side, of course. The okay, this is the look like. I you have to keep this surface dry because the, this if this uh, moisture will make the silicone release paper wrinkle, so no good. Let me change that. I'll use uh, four layers of denim cloth. Or you can use sheeting, cotton sheeting. Okay, this is uh, the front with the silicone paper and the, the painting. Adhesives facing the, the back. So just to iron it, and I need a protecting sheets. Oh, I forgot to bring use anything. I think the thing is, if you have something that. Uh, uh, if the backing paper is larger, I mean the silicone paper is larger, it might stick on the on that protecting sheets. So you need to choose the best paper for that purpose is the release paper. I have to run to get it. Forgive me. Okay, now I'm back. Um, I got a sheets of uh, release paper with no silicone attached, which is best for the purpose of uh, dust uh, preventing or protective sheets. And I use the uh, comb iron. Plug that in. Okay, set the temperature. At uh, somewhere between silk and the uh, wool, and start ironing from center out. About one minute in average. Uh, depends on how wet the paper is, actually, um, because the paper we painted is still very wet, so it will take longer time. And you can see the protection sheet start to wrinkle, but that doesn't matter because the, as long as the painting is okay, this will take a little uh, extra moisture. It's good. It's like blotting. But not, if you have moisture under, which is bad. So if you see this kind of wrinkle on the back, which means you got water on the, on the silicone release paper, on this side of the, the paper, you will have trouble. So on this paper, it's okay. If the moisture is still uh, is still dampened, so I need to keep iron because this is really wet. It might take three minutes. Who knows? And you can increase the temperature, but I like to work uh, slowly, so it gives me 
more, you know, less risk, I think. Just a little more labor, which is fine. If you use high temperature, it's, it, um, if you have trouble, you cannot uh, adjust. See the painting now look like still a little dent. So let me change a spot. Because the surface, the protecting piece is wet. I change the spot. Keep iron, it's like blotting with the drier part again. Okay. And this is how it looks like. You see the nice texture with this uh, paper. Um, I got lost. Where is the sky? Well, you can you can still make it uh, just like you know um, abstract art. It could be looked in different orientations. And uh, what's nice is you can uh, actually transfer this onto a regular watercolor so you can keep uh, working. Okay, let's, let's show you what to do. Okay, here's an artist's watercolor called Press. And I just mount this on artist, see what happens. Here's what to uh, you do to peel off from a corner the release paper, separate the release paper from the painting. Now it's backed with a, a silicone film, like a lamination on the back. Never put on the front, otherwise you will be in trouble. But you know, this painting can be looked both ways, so it's not really a big deal. However, you cannot change back. Once the silicone is attached, you cannot take it off easily. Okay, now let's uh, iron one more time. This time no water, okay. First time we we the better have some moisture, just like iron a shirt. Okay, now uh, no water, just iron. It's a good idea to put this release paper from back now on to the top to protect the painting. So you have this sheet of paper after you done this first time. So this is the backing paper come with the silicone, right? Now I iron. One more time, just activate. You see this dust, if you work without the protecting sheet, the iron will stand, the, the dust will stand the, the painting. So you must have this sheet on top between the iron and the, the painting, right? Just very easy, you know, you don't have to press anything, just activate. Just activate the adhesive. It's heat uh, heat sensitive adhesive called silicone mounting paper. Okay, I <clears throat> I will leave lift the I'm sorry, I think is anything wrong here? Oh have to make sure it's flat. This is more than that. OK. 
Okay. Here we go. Okay, this is a dry mounted, um, and you can paint on it. You can do collage if you will. Just you know, take the painting into small pieces and place where you like an iron. Uh, I've done that before. That would nice. So you can now uh, keep painting on this uh, to finish. So. Basically, um, this is the procedure uh, and the advantage of doing watercolor on uh, very thin mulberry paper is that you can paint on both sides and you can use either side as your uh, final surface, final support. And you can um, collage it or mount it on regular watercolor paper and keep working on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.